What's going on guys? So I had a few questions on about what lights I use for my 25 Lagoon. So I wanted to go over that, um, let you guys know what I use, uh, things I did to get successful with growing a mixed reef with all different types of corals I have in here and um, why I went with two AI primes and the settings I went with. So first, let's discuss what type of, types of coral I have in here so you can get an understanding on why my settings are the way they are. So I have all different types of corals. I have, you know, zoas, softer corals over here. Um, I got blastos, acans, favia over here in the middle. Um, even got a rock flower anemone up there. Up top here, I have all my SBS. So I got... A month portal on each side of those of that bird's nest. I got a green slimer, which I think snacro. I don't know. I'm not. Uh, I don't focus in on these names of corals. I do the research when I first get them to know where to place them, and then I kind of I kind of forget what they are. But um, I have another big bird's nest right there, which has been growing great. Um, that one doesn't look too hot right now. Um, I actually came home from work and it had fallen over, so I had just. Uh, set it back up. So that's why it kind of looks bad, that red one right there. Um, I have other SBS over here. Uh, that one back there, it, that one I got for free. I, I mean, I'm going to give it to somebody else, so I don't really care about that one. It's not looking too well. It's in a horrible spot. You know, it's it's whatever. Um, I got LPS, you know, over here. Um, some candy cane, another LPS over here, off to the sides a little bit. Uh, let's see what else. I got another LPS Duncan right there. Um, another little piece of Monty. That was a, a little chip that came off that I just set on that rock and forgot about. And it's been it's been growing out pretty good in that spot. Um, I got Cyphastria finally growing down on this rock. Um, I got a couple more that I picked up at a coral show recently that I'm wanting to kind of grow into this glass. I'm wanting that one to take over that, that rock right there. I have a couple more SPS that, I mean, I might get rid of. This one right here, this Monty's not looking too hot. Uh, that is not due to lighting or anything. It's actually due to a fish I got. So I'm probably gonna make a video, probably short on uh, what fish that was and things to look out for that fish. Um, a fish did that to, to that coral. Uh, some more Monty, GSP, Favia back there. My Royal Grama that likes to just hide. It's hides from the six line. Um, I got a soft, some soft corals right there. There's that six line. So um, mushroom coral there. Some more mushrooms over here. Uh, growing on these rocks, they're doing great. They, st they Those both started out as one mushroom. And now they've exploded. That one's even trying to bounce a little bit, which is going to be awesome. So you can see I got all different types of corals. Uh, they're all healthy, looking pretty good for the most part. Uh, they're all growing decently. Um, so let's talk about the lights. So the types of lights I use are AI primes. So I do have two AI primes. Now, the reason I went with two AI primes is not just knocked my flashlight over, is uh, not for power. It's actually for shadowing. I think one AI Prime actually would have been all right because um, there's a lot more power that I'm not using in these AI Primes, so I could have ramped them up quite a bit uh, if I just had one. But it's for shadowing purposes. So if I had just one in the middle, the rocks would shadow a lot of these corals. Like, for instance, I wouldn't be able to put as many uh, Zoas over here on this side they would extend and uh, not grow on the sides of the rock like they're they're doing now or on the back because um, they'd be shadowed. Uh, those clove polyps down there would be shadowed. So yeah, it's just for shadowing purposes is the reason why I went with two AI primes. Uh, let's go with, um, let's look at my mounting. So for my AI primes, I use the uh, the fixed mounting, not the flex arm. I like the look of this a lot better. It, it's more, you know, cornered, looks straight. It looks really nice compared to the flex arms. I, flex arms are cool too. This is just my style. It's whatever, whatever preference you have. Um, but I do have them mounted 10 inches off the water surface. So I took a ruler, 
measured from here and I had it touch the water and that is 10 inches. So they are 10 inches away from the water. Um, so let's go to my light settings. So I'm gonna figure out how to post the settings in this video. So you should be seeing them now. If not, I, I didn't figure it out. But so my settings on my two AI primes are set up exactly the same. So my UV is 42%, my violet is 42, my royal is 31, my blue is 31, my green is three, my red is zero, moonlight is zero, and cool white is six. So yeah, my cool white's pretty low. I do like the blue light. Um, I'm in it for the corals, not the fish. Um, I like that blue light look. Uh, the corals I have have a nice fluorescent look to them. Um, if you had a lot of soft corals, um, not zoas, but leather corals and things like that, I think white light looks better on those corals. But for the types of corals I have, um, definitely the blue light looks really good, especially for the zoas and um, really all of them, honestly. But the zoas and the bird's nest, they really pop. And the money, well, they all do. So I just like that look. Um, it's up to you, it's preference. Um, th again, this is just what I use, so um, I'm just, um, this isn't what you need to run on your tank. This is just what I've used that works for me. So if you have a different setting that's working for you, great. If you have something that uh, you think promotes growth a lot better, awesome. I'm just telling you what I use, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, so for my light schedule, so when I have my lights on, so they first come on at, what is it, 10 a.m. every day. So they first kick on at 10, and it's a slow ramp up time until 1 p.m. So at 1 p.m. they get to that full spectrum that I just read off. So they're from that full spectrum from 1 p.m. until I think seven, or yeah, till seven. And then they start to ramp down and, and they're off at nine. So that is my lighting schedule. Uh, so things that helped um, my tank grow when it came to lighting. So I did have some trial and error, especially when I had my single AI prime on my 10 gallon tank. Um, I did everything wrong. So I just want to kind of run through that, let you guys know what not to do or what what I did, you know, if you want to do it, that's fine. I'm um, just letting you know what I did that kind of screwed things up, made uh, cycling the tank take longer, made my corals um, not grow as quickly as they could have. Uh, so first thing, uh, not adjusting your lights, schedule and settings. So that's a big thing, keeping everything consistent. So for instance, um, I had a lot of algae growth when I had first started my tank. Um, so I read on the forums and all that, that my, maybe my lights were too high, you know, adjust them down or whatever. So I did that. Uh, didn't help the dinos at all. Uh, didn't stop the algae from growing. It still grew just fine. Uh, algae is from a, a nutrition issue, not necessarily the lights. Lights do play a part, but it's more uh, nutrition and not having enough bacteria in your, in your aquarium to, to eat up that all that excess nutrients. So I adjusted the lights, which in return made my corals have to readjust to their setting, ma settings, making them not grow as quickly. Uh, it's just a domino effect once you start messing with your settings. So once you find a light schedule, a light settings that you like, stick with it. So for instance, like take into account when you work. So if you, you know, work a regular job, a nine to five, and you come home at five, you want your lights to be on. You don't want them to start going off. So just because the sun comes up at seven or eight in the morning, whenever it comes up, um, doesn't mean your tank has to come up at that time. If you work uh, night shifts and you want your, your tank to come on at, you know, when you get home at midnight or 1 a.m., 2 a.m., whatever, then that, that works for you. So just, Pick what, what, uh, what works for you when you're home to view them. So for instance, uh, where I work, I work uh, 24 hour shifts and then I'm off for a couple days. 
So uh, I'm home in the mornings, so I get to enjoy my tank in the morning. That's why I have mine come on in the morning and go off in the evening when I go to bed. Um, that works for me. So just pick a schedule that works for you and stick to that schedule. So um, other things to account for, if you have your tank in your living room or bed, and you know, obviously if you're going to bed at a certain time and your tank's in there, you want your lights to be off when you go to bed. So take that into account. Also, if, you're, if it's in your living room and your family likes to watch movies like mine and you don't want the lights blinding you, maybe it's next to your TV or whatever, uh, keep that in mind. So maybe you want your lights to go off around 7 or 8 so you can enjoy TV without the blue light blinding you. So uh, when you're first setting up your tank, think about all those types of things. It'll really help you out in the long run. Um, let's see. Oh, sorry, I'm looking over my notes here. Um, okay, so whenever you're uh, getting new corals and things, let's say um, all my corals in here were doing great, and then I got that red Monty right there. I stick it in there. I love the placement of it, uh, but well, I come back in a few days and it's not looking too hot. You know, the last thing you want to do is adjust your light settings to help that coral out. You think, okay, it's not looking too hot. Uh, my light settings are kind of low. Monty's like higher light. So I'm going to adjust my lights up a little bit. Uh, even if you're like, I'm going to do it slow over time. You know, that's the wrong answer. The thing you want to do is move that coral closer to the light if you can. Or some corals just aren't going to work. If every other coral in your tank is doing great, don't adjust the light to help out one coral. Move that coral to your lights. Um, I can't stress that enough. That's huge. Um, I made that mistake when I was first setting up my tank. I had got um, a bunch of uh, corals that need a little higher lights, uh, LPS and stuff, or at the time I thought they needed higher lights. They, they don't really. Um, so I adjusted my tank to help those corals end up actually being too much light, killing um, a hammer coral that I had and also making my, my zoa stop growing and closing up and all sorts of stuff. So um, that was a learning curve I had to go through. Uh, corals, they'll adjust. So um, give it some time. If it's not doing too hot in the first few weeks, I mean, I say just let it be, you know? If the coral doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. Now, if it's something you spend a lot of money on, uh, try to place that coral in a better spot, but just set it there for a while. Corals will eventually adjust to their settings, um, and they'll start to they'll start to grow. So, um, I've seen people have uh, this guy I got the blasto from, for instance. Um, he sent me a picture, and his blastos were actually growing underneath a rock in complete shade. So, I mean. That just shows that corals will adjust to their environment. That's all the room they had to go to spread out to make more polyps. So they started growing underneath a rock in complete shade. Um, and it worked for those corals. They adjusted to it. So um, that's another thing to, to keep in mind. Uh, that's really about it for, for the lights and settings and things to do and not to do. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, if I'm missing anything, please let me know. I'm not the best at uh, speaking, explaining myself, so uh, a little scattered brain when it comes to that. So if I missed anything, uh, just leave it down in the comments. Or if you have any questions, leave it in the comments, and I'll answer it as soon as I can. But I just wanted to share with you what has worked for my mixed reef, um, and why I have two AI primes, and why the settings are what they are. Um, Another thing, I did get my settings from the BRS video, so I do recommend watching that. It's the settings I went with. Honestly, it's because it's one of the first videos I saw, and um, that's why I went with um, the settings I told you um, I have. So I suggest go looking at that BRS video. It really did help me out when setting up my uh, tank. Um, the biggest thing about lighting, though, is just finding a schedule that works for you and keeping it there. The corals will adjust, and everything will eventually start to grow where they are. Um, keep in mind, I don't have any really, really high-end corals, so I don't have um, hard-to-keep acros and all that in here. So maybe they do need some higher light than what I have. 
Um, just keep that in mind. This is for a mixed reef with fairly easy to keep corals. All my corals I have are more on the beginner friendly side. Uh, even my SPS are just Montes and Bird's Nests uh, and a Green Slimer. So those are all uh, relatively easy corals to keep. Um, so yeah, that's what works for me. Uh, thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you have any other video ideas for me um, to make, I, I kind of enjoy making them. I got some spare time when I'm off work. So, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.